In this video we are going to take a closer look at what I would consider one of the most iconic space marine units that have been around since ages, the Terminators. First we will take a look at their datasheet and general abilities, then we will go through how to specifically make use of them in a Deathwatch army. Lastly there will be some modeling recommendations and a quick wrap up. This release is part of a mini-series on the Proteus Kill Team, which will cover all the units available to that Kill Team. Welcome to Swiss Hammer, your channel for modeling in Warhammer 40k. My name is Tamer and I will be guiding you through this video. Before we jump right into the datasheet, it is worth mentioning that the Deathwatch has a unique datasheet for Terminators, which is called Deathwatch Terminators. While it is still possible to field regular Terminator squads, Assault Terminator squads and Relic Terminator squads from the Space Marine Codex, the Deathwatch Terminator datasheet basically combines Terminator and Assault Terminator squads into a single datasheet, making it superior due to the added flexibility. As such, regular Terminator and Assault Terminator squads should never be taken in a Deathwatch army. On the other hand, Relic Terminator squads still offer unique loadouts unavailable to Deathwatch Terminators, as such those could be an option, though as we will see over the course of the video, there is currently little incentive to do so. Looking at the datasheet of the Deathwatch Terminators, they are firstborns packed into tactical dreadnought armor, which is represented by their extra wound and an armor save of 2+, as well as the 5+, in will save from the Crux Terminators. Their stats line is the exact same as that of the previously mentioned Terminator and Assault Terminator squads, which I think is a bit of a shame, as Deathwatch Terminators are supposed to be the veterans of the veterans, and in case of the Deathwatch veterans for instance, this is represented by an extra attack on their datasheet, which is something that the Deathwatch Terminators did not get. Furthermore, while I am usually fairly relaxed about the whole firstborn versus primaries issue, something that has always irked me is that aggressors got T5 in addition to the extra attack, while the iconic terminators are stuck at T4, though on a side note, we have ways around that in the death watch. But anyway, don't mind the extra salt, they just happen to be one of my favorite units in the entire game. These little stat issues aside, I think that Terminators have transitioned very well into 9th edition, going up to 3 wounds, and the more recent Armor of Contempt rule plays well into their 2 plus armor save. At 33 points base cost, 11 points per wound behind the 2 plus armor safe and the 5 plus symbol is very affordable and here the Deathwatch Terminators in fact have an advantage over the regular Terminators. While Double Lightning Claws is the cheapest Assault Terminator loadout, and this is the exact same for Deathwatch Terminators, they for some reason don't pay for Power Swords, Power Axes and Power Mauls, which means you can run a Stormbolter plus one of those three power weapon combos for 33 points as well, bringing them 5 points below the regular Terminator datasheet doing the same. Our Deathwatch Terminators have to pay for Power Fists and Chain Fists though, which brings them on par with the regular datasheet. But anyway, as we will see later in the video, this can be a small points advantage to push for when including them in a Proteus skill team. Speaking of loadouts, Deathwatch Terminators can bring up to 3 heavy weapons, such as Assault Cannon, Heavy Flamer, Plasma Cannon, which is otherwise Dark Angels exclusive by the way, and Cyclone Missile Launchers, which is usually reserved for a single Terminator on the regular Terminator datasheet. Pretty neat. Another thing worth mentioning is that the Cyclone Missile Launcher can be combined with Thunderhammer plus Storm Shield or Dual Lightning Claws, resulting in pretty unique combos. This has been confirmed to work in both a 7th edition Deathwatch FAQ as well as an 8th edition Space Wolves FAQ, which basically confirms that you can trade the Stormbolter once again after you first exchanged it for the Stormbolter and Cyclone Missile Launcher. Links to sources in the description. Last but not least, the Terminators can also bring along a Teleportomer, which allows them to redeploy, but they basically lose a turn when doing so. Still, for a slow moving unit, that can be very useful. For abilities, next to the Mansion Crux Terminatus and Armor of Contempt, they also have Teleport Strike already built into their datasheet. Moving on to the stratagems, here we have one that stands out in particular. 
Fury of the First, which adds one to the attack hit rolls of the Terminators. This is especially great when they are equipped Thunder Hammer, Power or Chain Fist, as it allows to negate default minus one of the weapon. However, one word of caution here, while a unit with the Adeptus Astaris keyword can be selected for the stratagem, only models with the Terminator keyword are actually affected by the plus one to the hit roll. A potential problem here is including Terminators in a Protea scale team, to which we will get in just a moment. Unless there are only Terminators in the unit, for instance if you combat squad 5 of them, the Terminators won't get the Terminator keyword, and as such they don't get the benefits from Fury of the First. But speaking of the Proteus Kill Team, Deathwatch Terminators can also be part of the Proteus Kill Team, so one important thing to consider is whether to bring these guys along as an actual Deathwatch Terminator squad, or to include them in the Proteus Kill Team. The short answer here is that as far as I'm concerned, they should always be part of a Proteus Kill Team, at which point they become troops, and therefore gain OPSEC, which is immensely beneficial for such an elite unit. On the flip side, as previously mentioned, for as long as they are mixed with other data sheets, they only get the Terminator keyword for the purposes of Balter Discipline and Bordic Transports, but otherwise they don't have it, therefore no Fury of the First. So now that we have decided to bring them along as part of a Proteus scale team, how can we make best use of them in the Death Watch? Previously, I have done an entire video on the Proteus scale team and its competitive loadouts, the link is in the description. For the purposes of this video, I will highlight a few powerful combos featuring Terminators. The first and perhaps most obvious is adding 5 Terminators and splitting them off with combat squads. In that case, they work just like a regular squad of Terminators, except that they are now troops and OPSEC. They can then for instance be deployed through their teleport strike ability. However, I think Terminators truly shine in the Death Watch when they are mixed with other data sheets. One such combo I like in particular are three veteran bikers and two Terminators, at which point the whole unit becomes T5. OPSEC T5 Terminators? Hell yes! I covered this one in more detail in my previous video about the practical approach to the Proteus scale team, which I linked in the description. Beyond that, mixing 2-3 Terminators into a full-strength Proteus scale team has been immensely popular in competitive play these past few months, mainly because of two styles of builds. The first one is running three Cyclone Missile Launcher Terminators. As previously covered, Deathwatch Terminators can bring up to three heavy weapons Weapons, and in that case the cheaper Deathwatch veterans are acting as ablative wounds for the far more expensive Terminators. The second build is the Costello style Proteus scale team, named after Michael Costello himself, where Terminators with Thunder Hammers and Storm Shields are part of a big close combat murder brick of kill team. Another great advantage of mixing Terminators into kill teams is that they can benefit from the additional movement of other data sheets, which results in the Terminators getting dragged along. For more information on the Costello style Proteus kill team, feel free to check the video about the practical approach to the Proteus kill team mentioned earlier. With the introduction of the Armor of Contempt, I think that mixing Terminators into Proteus kill team has only gotten better, because as I was mentioning earlier, we can run them as cheap as 33 points, making them even cheaper tanks per wound than Deathwatch veterans with Storm Shields. This is something that for instance Mikkel Klangby has been doing in his latest list iteration, which I have covered in my May tournament result video. The idea here is to give a Costello style Proteus kill team an additional movement boost by demoting the Terminators to a Blade Wound duty, while leaving the hammers on the Van Vets and Vets. For this, the 5 points discount on the Power Sword come in handy, as you can basically run a Terminator with a Storm Bolter and Power Sword at discounted 33 points, giving him some ranged firepower, which is likely all he will ever do before he dies, but in case he does make it into close combat after all, he then still has the Power Sword, which plays well into other Armor of Contempt armies and similar. Overall, I think Terminators benefit immensely from the Armor of Contempt change, as it allows them to move away from the Thunderhammer Storm Shield combo and still remain durable, opening up alternative like Power or Chain Fists, or the previously mentioned Minimum Points loadouts. 
Last but not least, let's have a look at some modeling recommendations. I am sure you guys have already guessed what I am going to say here. Magnets, magnets, magnets. With such a wide range of loadouts, and many of them being competitive, I consider this one just as important as with the Deathwatch veterans. The usual arm magnetization aside, I also recommend magnetizing the Cyclone missile launcher, as this might come in handy in certain builds. For this, the same magnets as for the arms can be used. Personally, I am always going with 3mm per 1mm. For the models themselves, while Terminators tend to be commonly available on auction sites like eBay for cheap, I highly recommend looking into the Space Marine Heroes 2 series, which offers 9 unique sculpts for Space Marines and Terminator armor. These were sold separately in a box where you could not see which one of the 9 models you would get, and there was a low chance to get a Captain model. But anyway, this gambling element is unimportant for recruitment into the Death Watch. The idea here is simply to get a few decent looking terminators with unique poses, which we will then magnetize anyway, so which model you get in the boxes is pretty much irrelevant. But I don't think that these are commonly available in stores anymore, you might be able to buy some leftover stock at a discount or find them on auction sites, where people will usually sell the common models for cheap, because they were gambling for the exclusive captain and whatnot. Those amazing looking models aside, I think it is also a great idea to get some Dark Angels Deathwing or Space Wolf Terminators kits and converting them to the Deathwatch. After all, every Space Marine kit is a Deathwatch kit. To wrap things up, over the course of the video, we have looked at Deathwatch Terminators, one of our unique datasheets, which basically combines the regular Terminator and the Soul Terminator datasheets. In addition to that, we are allowed to bring along up to 3 heavy weapons, and we can also slap the Cyclone Missile Launcher on Assault Loadouts, like Dual Lightning Claws or the Thunder Hammer and Storm Shield combo. The biggest advantage in my opinion though, is including them into the Proteus Kill Team, where they become come troops and gain OPSEC. One thing to look out for however are keywords. For as long as terminators are mixed with other datasheets, they only get the terminator keyword for the purposes of bolter discipline and boarding transports, which means terminators in a mixed Proteus skill team do not have access to the popular fury of the first stratagem, which is a shame. Nonetheless, I recommend to always run them as part of a kill team anyway, the benefits by far outweigh the loss of the stratagem. A few popular examples are using 5 terminators with combat squads, in which case they gain the keyword anyway bringing 3 with Cyclone Missile Launchers along, making them T5 in a combat squad of 3 veteran bikers and 2 terminators, or going Costello style and playing them part as a big close combat murder brick. For more information on terminators in competitive play, I also recommend checking out my monthly tournament coverage videos. And last but not least, magnetizing the loadouts really helps, and for those interested in some fancy looking terminator models, I recommend the Space Marine Heroes 2 series. All in all, I think terminators are amazing in the Death Watch, and now is as good a time as any to bring them along in a Proteus scale team. So that's it for the Terminators in the Death Watch. Have you guys been using these yourself, or are you favoring other models and kill teams instead? Let me know in the comments. Finally, I would also like to mention that there is a Swiss Hammer Facebook page where I will be posting links to my videos as well as articles I find of interest. I do read a lot about the hobby, but not all of it will always end up as its own video. I look forward to seeing you there as well. I do also have a Patreon page. If you like my content, any additional support is greatly appreciated as it helps me invest into future videos. As always, thank you very much for watching guys, your continued support is greatly appreciated. I hope you have been enjoying this video, give me a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks again and see you next time.